Learn how you can use Microsoft Purview DevOps policies to control access and limit insider threats. Also learn how you can apply this to the principle of least privilege. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I have joined with me Vlad. Vlad, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yes, uh, Anna, uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm a senior program manager working for Microsoft Purview. I work with the policies team, and uh, I have introduced several of the capabilities over the last couple of years. Microsoft Purview is relatively a new product. Uh, we just reached the GA a few weeks ago uh, of the Microsoft Purview uh, policies. Awesome. Yeah. So I think you're the right person to have on the show to learn a little bit more about Microsoft Purview policies, what they are, why they exist, and how we can get started with them. So maybe I'll just pass over to you to tell us a little bit of background. Maybe you could take us through some sort of scenario or use case where people use policies. Let's talk about the uh, scenario of granting access to IT operations personnel so that they can perform a monitoring uh, of database system health and auditing of the security. The issue we have right now is that typically those IT operations personnel are granted high privileges like uh, DBA, mm -hmm. and then that uh, puts the user data at risk if you cannot trust the, the people that has the high privilege. So the risk is basically uh, they can take the data hostage, they can tamper with the data, they can do a denial of service, they can read the data or even copy it uh, and, and leak it outside. So the all, all, another different issue is that uh, the data is typically, um, the, or the access to the data is typically um, unstructured and unclear and inconsistent. Let, let me go back here. Another different issue is that the processes of granting access are unstructured and therefore unclear and inconsistent, and that causes delays. The, there is manual effort required to grant access, and that is typically done at each different uh, data system. And that tends to be error prone and is not scalable. And then that model of provisioning access in a distributed way leads to low visibility. So it's difficult to revoke access when it's not needed anymore. So what I'm going to do is do a demo of uh, Microsoft Purviews to see how we can solve this issue. Microsoft Purview for people that are new to it is a unified governance solution uh, that starts with uh, data map and data catalogs. All of your assets in the data state are mapped. And then you know, for the data policies app, which is what I'm going to demo today, and in particular DevOps policies, there is this seamless integration uh, with the data catalog and the data map that allows for uh, policies to be configured in a very simple way. I'm going to demonstrate how that happens. I have here user Megan, that is a um, policy author, will create a DevOps policy. And this will provide access to IT operations. The scenario that we have here is that uh, we have several different uh, data sources that are of SQL type. There is Azure SQL database, and then there is also Azure Arc enabled SQL Server. They are in a resource group, and we're going to create a single policy that will grant access to an Azure uh, Active Directory group, uh, access to you know, this uh, resource group to perform uh, IT operations type of uh, uh, actions 
right? Um, in particular, uh, monitor performance via a role that we have defined in Purview called SQL Performance Monitor. Adele is the user, the IT operations user that is part of that AD group. And we will demonstrate with Adele after we give her access that she can in fact run some of those commands. So back to Purview, we're going to create here a policy. And uh, in this policy, we are going to select a whole resource group, which is that finance resource group that we were talk is, is seeing in the prior slide. And we are going to choose SQL Performance Monitor. This is a role definition in Purview that maps to several different uh, actions on the SQL side. And we're going to select here a D group for Performance Monitor. And before we save this policy, we are going to demonstrate that Adele does not have access right now. So we're going to navigate here uh, and try to connect as Adele. So in fact here, Adele does not yet have access. I haven't created the policy. Back to Purview, we'll save the policy, which means it's going to be published. Now the policy will take five minutes to be enforced on the SQL side. This is a piece that we are going to edit where I'm gonna expedite this process here, one second. Ah, uh, yes, I remember this command. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so we have now waited five minutes for the policy to be enforced, and we're going to try to connect again as Adele. And uh, we are going to run one of the T-SQL commands that will give us access to a DMV that is used to uh, be able to monitor virtual file stats. So Adele is gonna try executing that one. And we see now that she has access to all of these different uh, metrics. She can also execute this one to monitor the wait times uh, but we gave that group that Adele belongs to access uh, for the SQL performance monitor role. We didn't give access for security auditor. So if Adele tries to execute this one, she's going to uh, receive a message that she does not have access. She doesn't have the permission for that. Also very important, you know, Adele does not have access to the user data because we structure these roles based on the principle of least privilege, which means we're just giving Adele exactly what she needs to perform her day-to-day -day, uh, job uh, of monitoring performance, but not more than that. And more importantly, we're safeguarding here uh, the user data. Um, so you can see here that um, she does not have that access. Nice. And so we're solving that particular problem of um, I can give now IT personnel um, exactly what they need without uh, exposing the user data. Awesome, cool. And this is for an Azure SQL database, but there are also DevOps policies applied for Azure Arc enabled SQL Server. Yes, so the, you know, policy will apply also to the ARC-enabled SQL Server. So I'm doing a remote desktop uh, session here to be able to show that now Adele with that single policy has access also to this Azure ARC-enabled SQL Server. So let's connect here uh, and let's execute that same command and we are going to get the same results and we are going to demonstrate that she does not have access to the user data in this case either. Nice, gotcha. Because this is a different database running on Azure Arc enabled SQL Server. Correct. Cool. So one policy you could apply to both SQL DB and uh, Azure Arc enabled SQL Server. Are there other data sources that are supported for this? 
We are going to have the support for the um, Azure SQL MI as well. Awesome, cool. Uh, Vlad, thanks so much uh, for sharing us this with us. Super helpful. I learned a lot. It was also great to see it in action and see how quickly uh, and easily you can set folks up using DevOps policies. As folks get started with this, do you have any tips, tricks, or words of advice? Uh, it's very important uh, what we highlighted, right? Uh, always have in mind the principle of least privilege. Understand uh, what are the roles that uh, uh, you have that you know have additional uh, access, and make sure that uh, you limit as much as possible, um, you know, who has access, and you safeguard. Uh, those accounts really well. Awesome. Cool. Well, Vlad, thanks again for coming on the show. Uh, I learned a lot. I think our viewers probably learned a lot as well. If you're a viewer, you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. We'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <music>